decision is. All right, Jeff, thank you very much. Uh, joining us now, Democratic Congressman Denny Heck. He's a key member of the House Intelligence Committee. Congressman, thanks so much for joining us. I want to quickly begin with the new reporting you just heard from our own Evan Perez, our justice correspondent. Does the public silence from the special counsel's team right now tell you anything about this investigation, where it's heading? No, because he's been silent all along. Although I would, I, I would acknowledge, however, Wolf, that it's conceivable that he already has a, an indictment under seal and he's just waiting until the midterms have come and gone. We're all going to find this out together. Bob Mueller has conducted this investigation with the utmost of professionalism from the beginning. He's not uh, discontinuing that track now. We'll all find out together. We know there's been uh, several, a lot of uh, indictments and, and convictions. What's left, do you believe, Congressman, for Mueller and his team? Well, as I have said repeatedly with you, Wolf, I believe more indictments are coming. It's, it defies credibility. It certainly strains it to think that he has had plea deals with the president's personal lawyer, the president's campaign manager. He's granted immunity to the CFO of the Trump organization. He spent dozens and dozens of hours in interviews with those three individuals. It defies credibility that he is not going to come up with additional indictments. More people are going to go to jail than have been named thus far. Of that, I am confident. With Michael Cohen, it doesn't look like there's a formal deal or anything, although he is cooperating, right? He is. And in fact, that's what the 50 hours is all about. He's invested a lot of time. Director Mueller's invested a lot of time in extracting uh, the truth from uh, Mr. Cohen. Do you expect additional indictments anytime soon against U.S. citizens? Yes. You want to name names? No. I, well, I don't, I don't have names or I would give them to you. But the fact of the matter is this is obviously something that is going beyond the names that have, of the people that have already been indicted or have already reached plea deals or they wouldn't have invested all this time in interviewing them. So, yes, I believe there will be additional indictments. I believe additional people will be going to jail. And I believe it is a, as a consequence of the intensive interviews he's doing with the people who have reached plea deals with Director Mueller. At some point, uh, though, uh, we could see a final report, at least a version of a final report from the special counsel, uh, and sources say that could come as early as December. He would submit that report to Rod Rosenstein, the deputy attorney general. Rosenstein would then have to decide what to do with it. Do you worry, though, that Mueller is feeling pressured right now to wrap up his investigation prematurely? I've never lost one wink of sleep worrying about how Bob, Bob Mueller is going to respond to pressure. Uh, he's got a steel backbone. Remember, Wolf, this is a decorated Marine from the Vietnam era conflict who has an entire career of, of noteworthy accomplishments. He's prosecuted Russian mobsters uh, and organized criminals for his entire career, and he's done it unflinchingly and unblinkingly. So I don't, I don't worry whatsoever that he's going to be feeling any pressure to do anything other than that which he thinks is right under the law. As you know, uh, under the Republican majority, your committee, the House Intelligence Committee, has shut down its investigation. If the Democrats take the majority in the midterm elections, do you think the House Intelligence Committee will reopen the investigation? Well, I'm trying not to think too far past 20 days and five plus hours from now, but, uh, Wolf. But it will depend on what the outcome of the election is, and it will depend on who would be chairing the committee at that time. Uh, and I also think, most importantly, it will depend on what Bob Mueller's report is if he makes it known shortly after the election. I mean, it's possible he issues it on November 7th. It could already be written. We just don't know. Uh, but I think there are an awful lot of people who are going to put a lot of trust in his work product because of the care that has gone into developing his work thus far. Let's turn to the latest news, very disturbing news on the missing U.S.-based journalist Jamal Khashoggi, apparently murdered inside a Saudi consulate in Turkey. Do you think the United States needs to get a hold of this uh, reported recording that Turkish officials have in, in order to come, come to a specific conclusion about what happened inside the consulate? So I, I kind of feel like it's almost like opposite day at the White House, the more the evidence mounts that something of a heinous nature was conducted, the stronger their defense of the Saudi Arabian uh, kingdom there is. No, look, I, I've got a simple message, frankly, for the Saudis. You can take your oil and shove it because human rights aren't for sale. If you want to be a member of the community of civilized nations, then you need to begin behaving in that way, and they simply are not. The fact of the matter is, Wolf, they cannot answer the simple question. Mr. Khashoggi went in. He didn't come out. 
So where is he? Well, do you think Congress uh, will take specific action if uh, President Trump decides to ignore all this? I do, and I think there are a couple of three actions that immediately should be taken. First of all, I encourage in the strongest terms possible for Secretary Mnuchin to decide to pull out of the investment conference. To do otherwise is to re reward them for this unacceptable behavior. Uh, secondly, I think it's time that the president sent to the U.S. Senate a nominee for ambassador to Saudi Arabia because the truth of the matter is dealing with these things, communicating to them, is made much more possible when you have high-ranking diplomats on the ground to express our displeasure and uh, help them see the error of their ways. And thirdly, the action that I think Congress will take uh, is not to approve any more arms sales to the Saudis. Now, there's a good case to be made for not approving them because of how they were used in the civil war in Yemen and how civilians, including children, have been murdered as a consequence of the arms and bombs that we sold to the Saudis. But above and beyond that, in this instance, I think we ought to stop those arms sales, and I think that's what Congress would do at the next opportunity. Congressman Denny Heck, uh, thanks for joining us. Thank you, sir. Up next.